community. And I want to thank the organizers, the Baptist Ministers Conference, SCLC, National Action Network, Churches in Action, Pastors Conference, I say SCLC, right? And others who came out to be a part. Church is essential. But, you know, I know you understand. Thank you for allowing um, Reverend David Price um, to be who he is. And he represents you well. And I'm going to say Nobody this. Nobody allows him, David, to be no, 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 Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Um, he need a raise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we give him hands. <laughs> you know, and, and listen, I'm just being honest. Thank you. Uh, we give them hell. Um, you know, sometimes we feel that there's an absence yep. between the faith community yep. and, and the office. Yep. You know, we know you. We know you want to have in the government. We believe sometimes staff needs to be away from us. And so, in the midst of all the history of LA, we've always seen our mayor and the faith community. And so, our expression today is <coughs> I'm glad we got your attention. You know, and so I know we have a list of uh, pastors that's here that have various issues, especially Bishop Mendez. I stand with every pastor concerned. My only demand is people stop killing us. You know, and I put that clear on my shirt. I didn't want to come and ask you for nothing. Um, you, um, the office haven't given us nothing. You know, so we want to make sure we just make that demand. It's stand in solidarity of the peace and George Floyd. So, um, Bishop Mendez, talk. Oh. Well, uh, good morning, and thank you so much for listening to us. One concern that has been... Can you speak a little louder, please? Sorry. Mm -hmm. You need to come over here. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, the community has been asking for police commissioners to fully represent the, the, the community. And we haven't seen one during your administration. We supported you, uh, Mayor Garcetti. When things look really bad when, uh, when during your election, we stood with you. We had many prayer meetings. We invited you to our pulpit. We opened our churches. But yes, in the last six years, we have not seen those promises that you made to us during your campaign. And so, you know, the, when the community asks us, how, how's the mayor working out, Bishop? We, we, we just have to tell them the truth and say, I don't know. I don't know, because we, we have asked you repeatedly for commissioners that represent, represent the community, but all the appointments have been people that contributed to your, 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 your company. That's the perception here, and you can't change perception. I appreciate that. I always per listen to that. Perception yeah. is reality. <coughs> and so that is, that is one of my concerns that, you know, when we, when we look at the commissions, we don't, we don't see people that represent our community. And it's not people that we can go and say, uh, you know, this, this issue or that issue. And the police commission has been awful in the in this last few years because they have not listened to the concerns of the community. That's right. Pastor Smart. This pastor, the nice pastor Smart. Yeah. <laughs> if you uh, pastor Smart. For, for, first of all, before we go in too deep, I would just like to offer a word of prayer. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. If, if Amen. that's okay. Most high, Heavenly Father, we yes. just Jesus. touch and agree. Even though we're we're isolated, we touch our spirits and agree. Yeah. Yes. We just ask for yes, um, the law of communication, the spirit of communication. When Moses was ordained by God, he refused it. He said, I can't even talk. I mm. stutter. And he wanted to hand it over to his brother Aaron. Many of us today, maybe our words are not what we want them to be because of the calamity that we've been through, the trauma that we've been through, Lord. But I ask that you give us the words that will touch the hearts of man, that you will turn hearts of stone to hearts of flesh in this hour. And Father God, bless the mayor right now in the yes. name of yes. Jesus. Yes. I'm a firm believer in the Holy Ghost. And yes. even as we yes. sit in the room, I feel the power Jesus. of the Holy Spirit yes. right now, right here. Yes. And so, Lord, we just bind up anything that would separate us. We bind up anything that would come against us. And this is a moment in time, just like in the book of Pentecost yes. when the Holy Spirit came down. Mm. This is our moment in time. Yes, yes. So cover the mayor right now in the name of Jesus. Cover the pastors right now in the name of Jesus. Cover this special the, the where's uh, the the brother police officer. I wanted to pray with him. He was just standing there. Oh, sure. yes. Woodyard. Commander Woodyard. Where is he? Come on in here. Uh, 
He's on a call. I want to bless him. I want to bless him because the, the spirit that he was showing out there yes. with the people. Amen. I just I just yes. want to command a blessing over his head. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. Because Father God, you know our intention. You know our intention is to bring unity. You yes. know that by your stripes we are healed. Yes. You know yes. that greater is he that is in us. Yes. And Jesus said, greater works have I done. I believe greater works is going <clears> to <throat> happen right in this room right, right, right now Amen. today. Amen. I, come on, if you believe in Amen. God. Amen. I just command a blessing over you, Mayor. Yes. Amen. We are in terrible mm. times. We're in traumatic times, but yes. I command miracles upon this city. Yes. Amen. May this city be the iconic leadership that we're looking for in Jesus' name right now in this hour. Yes. May Los Angeles lead the people by faith, not by power nor by yes. might, but what? By his by spirit. spirit. Yes. And so we just expect great things. Yes. Thank you, Pastor Chief is meeting. Thank you. Mayor, um, I have the privilege of serving at Compton. Um, and um, I have two, two possible requests or suggestions. Of course, we know that some of the complaints amongst both the sheriffs and LAPD is that a lot of people from this community are not the ones patrolling the community, if you will. And there's a barrier there because a lot of young men, young women that come from our community are immediately thrown in the, in the category of gang affiliation. So I would really like to see how we can maybe change that language, make it more lenient, reform that whole thing. Because the truth is that most of our young men and young ladies, we know people who are affiliated um, in, in games, but that should not keep them from their desire to want to now protect the same community that they were born and raised in. That's the first. Second thing, I would really love to see, when it comes to recruiting for LAPD, for the churches to become that catalyst. Mm -hmm. That the churches need to be the place that vet a lot of these new recruits because the pastors, we can hold them accountable in ways that you or the sergeant or no one else can hold them accountable. And so I would love to see the church to begin to be the place where you all come to us oh. and say there are some young men that you know you all have trained and mentored. Bring them to us, right? And then we they're now the ones that will be representing that community. So those are just my two Humble suggestion. Pastor yeah. Sauce. Uh, Mr. Mayor, you know you're my friend. I love you. But friends tell each other the truth. And uh, and the time has come for truth. My friendship with you has always been based on telling the truth because I see myself as uh, a prophetic pastor. I'm not one who to be shepherd. That's all the way. And uh, uh, so a couple of things that I think I have uh, looked up. Uh, one is um, any budget is a moral number. And it reflects both the, the moral stance of the leader as well as the 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 current budget that we've been rushed through. Is not a reflection of what you just said. I work with LAP. I believe it will be managed to affect it because of the happening of our problems in the group. But there is this continuous debate for this country in this country uh, that is predicated upon shoot and kill mm -hmm. and ask questions. And those are being shot because of so the black immigrant you know, in this country I stand at the intersection of what it means to be black and mm -hmm. And I've chosen to work with that answer. Mm -hmm. and, so, uh, and so and so my my big issue, like not only my huge policy maker in the mm -hmm. uh, public church, mm -hmm. uh, the budget is, is 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 a huge obstacle. It's a huge challenge. Because to have over 50% of the general fund <coughs> because of promises made of pre COVID and pre you know, uh, George Floyd, uh, for me, you know, communicates uh, inconsistency with me. Of course, you understand that for some. But the big question is 
how does your plan be fit you know, to you are and the vision that you, you know, have. You know, so, so because what now I'm thinking, and the fact that the budget committee has been skipped, you know, I uh, have to work on it. And, you know, uh, and, and there's a, a rush together a pass that city council. We are aware of the negotiations we haven't seen. But right now, that budget is really saying to us, uh, black and brown folks, spoke to uh, four justices in this country, you know, we are continuing to commit it to you know, a police culture, to invest in a police culture that continues to kill, that continues to over police and under mm -hmm. so, so, so I'd like to hear about how can we, you know, uh, one, delay the process of budget approval, and secondly, you know, uh, how can we have a participatory process as to how do we work you know, uh, mm -hmm. on the budget? So it can reflect who we are as Angelinos. Well, I call myself an African Angelino. Mm -hmm. you know, who we are as individuals as Angelinos. And where do we see ourselves going in terms of wanting to see the city become beloved to me? Because that's our commitment. <coughs> and, and that's what we do. Do you want to ask it? Do you want to just take two more? <coughs> just, okay. Pastor Smith, and then Pastor Smith will be the last one. I'm Pastor Smith. Uh, I'm Pastor of Lucky Nouvelle Ministries. I'm also a mental health clinician and an adjunct professor teaching psychology of trauma. One of the things I recognize is that uh, not just LA, but, but America is traumatized. And I'm deeply concerned about the budget as well. Because if the budget is going to speak to helping bring therapeutic services to our community and less policing, then we're going to see a shift. And so I, I just want to know uh, among my colleagues, faith leaders, are you willing to support a budget that's going to bring more services mm -hmm. to yes. our community? Because without the services, without the therapeutic interventions, Change. the community yes. is going to continue to be in an in a, in a uproar. And so, um, so I, I, I just want to hear you say, are you willing to support a budget that's going to offer services yep. such as mental health, such as uh, helping those individuals who are incarcerated, who are coming back traumatized, not only those individuals, but also uh, the officers. When we talk about trauma, we also have to talk about vicarious trauma. That means those who are working with traumatized victims end up becoming traumatized. And so a lot of the things that we see, especially with the relationships among the police force and our community, um, it's not about people being bad or good, but it's about are we really providing the services, the necessary service to treat trauma as, very, as, as far as and vicarious trauma. And so I just need to hear your, your stance and are you willing to support a budget? Oh. We, 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 in California alone, we have one of the highest prison populations. We have one of the highest foster care systems. We have one of the highest um, uh, homeless situations. And when you look at homelessness, it's, it's, it's bound with drug addiction and trauma. When you look at foster care children, moving from household to household yes. that's being traumatized. We're still talking about trauma. When we talk about what's happening with the relationships of our law enforcement and community, it's based and rooted in trauma. So I, I really need to hear your stance and are you willing to support us as faith leaders, as concerned citizens, as fathers, as, 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 as citizens of this community? Are you really sincere about building a budget that's gonna support the therapeutic needs of this community? Thank you. I'm sorry, my young brother here, he had a yeah. um, question, and President yeah. Clevin is the <clears throat> president of California Baptist Convention, and Pastor Smiley again. Go yeah. ahead, Mayor, it's a pleasure to uh, meet you again. Um, as a you know U.S. Navy veteran, you know I have a lot of respect for you, but uh, and, uh, on, a, on another note, I've been the most critical uh, of you. Uh, we led a lot of uh, rallies. Uh, we even you know had to rally in front of your house, but uh, I headed up so to make sure it was peaceful. Um, so one thing that that I can say from you know just general experience during this COVID-19 pandemic, we understand that the city of Los Angeles, especially our, our inner cities, were were not prepared. Right, just as the majority of the gentlemen spoke earlier, we have that probably the worst healthcare system, the worst uh, mental health system that we have in Los Angeles. But one thing that I have noticed, you know, I've, I've donated thousands of dollars from my campaign to um, the, the different organizations. But if possible, the churches are the staples of our community. So I know we have the separation between church and state. If we can supply a budget that the churches can apply a reach from so they can continue to take care of our communities in a, in a crisis like this, right? Our senior citizens are homeless. 
our uh, low-income families. If we can get something like that, I think that will be uh, wonderful. I think it'll be great for the Los Angeles community. Um, another thing is uh, I've spoken um, with the families of the victims of police brutality, even you know, sat and spoke with George Floyd's family. I just came from Minneapolis uh, with my crew and we led a lot of peaceful organizations and peaceful protests. Um, and, I, and I was also arrested getting people off the freeway after our last uh, protest. We walked seven miles from uh, George Floyd's house to the freeway where the truck uh, ran through the crowd. Um, we pulled together seven different uh, protests to march with us from where George Floyd died to uh, to the site where the, the cop, I mean, that guy, you know, ran a truck. So one thing that, that I've noticed is they want to hear the voice of the leadership. They want to hear... Uh, you know, the voice of the leadership saying that we, we have your back. And obviously, one thing that I've, that I've uh, brought attention to whenever I spoke to these uh, different groups at the protest is where are our city council members? Where are mm -hmm. our state assemblymen? Where are our congressional representatives and senate representatives, especially our state and senate, people who are actually here in our community to actually be the leaders that we represent, that we voted in my office to be? You know, so when you ask these questions, you look around and you don't see anyone but the mayor here, or you go to the different cities and don't see anyone but the... Uh, maybe one or two council members that lets us know that we have a very uh, poor quality of leadership in our in our city. So when do uh, you as the leader, as a mayor, um, talk to the representatives or even, you know, have some type of the, rep the influence of the representative, tell them to come out to our cities and stand with us while we mourn, while we grieve. Um, so it, it also brings the attention to me that um, I know we have uh, bills in place that were passed on a federal level, the crime bill, the three strikes, the war on crack, the war on drugs. But we also have legislation that's passed on a local level that are geared to target black people and Latino communities. Um, so is it possible that we can get some type of oversight, uh, not to over, not to, I guess, uh, have oversight over the police department, but the laws that the police department use to target us? Because if we can continue to pull those laws away that target black people and Latinos in our communities, we can, we can start to mitigate the amount of police brutality, the amount of police violence, the amount of unjust um, incarceration from the black communities. So if that's something that you know, we can put together, I think that would be great. I, and I would be more than happy to head that as well, if possible. And you're the grandson of Reverend Collins? I am, yes. What did you do when you I was at AD. Um, I started in 2004. I was a F-18 Super Hornet mechanic and VFA 122. I uh, moved to Oklahoma. I did a, um, in a secret squadron. I did a boost on the ground tour in Iraq. I recruited, ran the number one recruiting station in NRD Dallas. I came back, ran the safety department, and uh, I headed the national, um, the NAVOSH program for the command. I got out 2017 at the end to get involved in politics from South Central Los Angeles. So this community is very important. And my grandfather was uh, Joey Collins Sr. Mm -hmm. <laughs> President Plevin is in Pastor Small. I'm sorry, we want to be mayor has to run the city, but I know this is important. This is running right the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. First of all, uh, mayor, I want to thank you for just opening up my guest today. Uh, we also quote Dr. Luther King, who said, "Do I be with the voice that we heard? So if we stop without finishing." Mm -hmm. culture uh, that relates to how we perceive us. And I think there has to be a real 
discussion of training on racial bias training. We've never did this on Christmas bias that I would have. Secondly, I would add that instead of us always following the grand jury process, when we're shooting, uh -huh. uh, that evaluate if they're going to press charges or not, yeah, there needs to be an independent prosecutor yes. that will oversee uh, the shooting, not the grand jury. Uh, that's responsible and accountable for the community. Uh, and the third thing I would ask is that that has to be a safe place for law enforcement officers who witness misconduct among their mm -hmm. colleagues that they can report it without being uh, sabotaged, uh, right. penalized, yeah. as a result of reporting right. what they witness a colleague doing. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Since, I guess, 2001, we've known each other. And when we talked when we first started running the group, we said one day you wanted to run for mayor. This, these are tough times, man. And we need to talk to um, Never before. I, I just would exit because a lot of songs that I've been with, and my past president there and others have said when I was about to run the city. So I just say, cool, man. You got to. You got to step up. You got to prove to a part of one of your constituency that you haven't bought into this whole police culture. The same police culture that happened in Minneapolis is running rampant in Los Angeles. Today was one of the best days I've seen in police interaction in this city. And what I said to more, what I said. Part of the problem is back there. You see them, them faces? They black folk. <laughs> Bottom line, they black folk. We, I mean, with everything else that is said, one of the panaceas is we need more black, sensitive community officers in this city. We need, I and I got stopped the other day. I got stopped on my way to church one time, motorcycle cop came up beside me. I made a U-turn. He said, what the heck did you do, Pastor? Because I had a this on. He said, man, he said, I said, I didn't see you. He laughed and my, and my family laughed. You didn't see me. He said, pray for me, but don't ever do that again. Mm -hmm. How many black people in the country got stopped by a motorcycle? Is any of that simple and they end up dead? That's it, Mayor. Yes. You got to rise. <coughs> friend to friend, yeah. Mayor, Mayor, you got to rise to the challenge now. We need to walk more beats, too. The people, the office, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm using not a, a, a protocol. I honor protocol. But a woman needs to speak. Yes, All right. uh, I want to say that um, we need more um, policing in our community that is not just saying we're policing. We come to communicate with the community. Walk those beats, if that's what New York used to do. Walk those beats. One little tiny story, I'm a preacher. It says my grandson was coming out of Sizzler. A police opened the door. He jumps. He was five years old. He jumped, scared, everything. The guy had just came on um, as a sheriff, and he said, I used to work in New York. Why are you scared of me? And he took him and he talked to him and he walked with him and gave him a sense of who he was and he got a sense of who he, of my grandson. We need more interaction as I've heard others say. I might be duplicating the statement, but this is coming from a woman's heart. We need more. We need more beat walking and know who your community is. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Dulles, no for allowing a lady to speak. Can I speak? Amen. Hi, my name is my name is Pastor Annette. I'm from San Pedro, and I wanted to talk about what Pastor Fisher said about our local police officers, sheriffs, and LABD that you know that that uh, have a certain community. What I think we need to do is that they need to know who are the community leaders. Like if you saw on TV, you saw just regular people uh, protecting stores, right? This lady yesterday was protecting some man's store, and you know, and other people. Down in Santa, Santa Monica, this white little white girl, these guys were coming and they were banging on the, the windows with a hammer. And this little white girl was, was with a sign and she stood ground. 
she stopped them from looting and breaking the law. Yes. I would have done that. I, you know, I mean, my husband's like, please don't go out there. You know, I thank God I have a, a husband. But, but I think if we had a, 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 you know, communications with our, with our LAPD, but people who, who are trained, mm -hmm. who know what they're doing, who can go out there and, you know, um, stop these, these, these hot spots of violence that's happening, I know we would do that as people of faith. I got nothing to lose. That's right. I know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid to die. Mm -hmm. I don't want to die, but I will. I but I will fight for the right cause, That's right. and I and I want to support our mayor. I want to support our LAPD, but I want to support the people that are here today. But we have to stand up. I've been very disappointed with our with the churches, to be honest with you. Mm. I, I, I I'm included, and I told I'm part of the San Pedro Pastors Alliance Club. We haven't got together once, even on Zoom, and I've been begging them. Let's get together. Let's just pray. So I've been calling my friends, we've been praying at my house, we've been praying on the phone, but I know that there has been a shift and it takes people like us to get out there and talk to our, our, our community, but it takes, it takes policies. Mm -hmm. It takes you know, us to have a relationship with LAPD and for us to say, hey, okay, we're having a problem here, LAPD tells us, and we go out there in numbers mm -hmm. and we protect our territory, we, we protect our neighborhoods. So I'm willing to step up. Amen. Yes, God. Mr. Mayor. Mayor, when you were running, I remember my husband and I coming to your house with your parents. And we had the most beautiful afternoon. And Pastor and I, we both thought to ourselves, this is the one. This is going to be good. I have the same expectation today and the same feeling. I have a lot of faith that this is going to be, it's going to be better. Amen. But I want to say something prophetically at this table. Preach it. This man right here, he's the key. He's the key to unlock this city. Yes. That man right there, now I know, I, I know what I feel. Yep. If he, I'm sorry, Pastor Tulis, if he, if he could just be seen, be felt, there's an anointing on him Hallelujah. that will assist in breaking yokes, yes. not breaking bodies, mm -hmm. that will assist in breaking, we need yokes broken, mm -hmm. because right now, even that little message that we've been getting about the curfew, it is scaring the hell out of our children. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, that is putting them into a deeper trunk. Yeah. To receive that notice, yeah. our young people are getting in the car, trying to get their marijuana and trying to get their beers before 5 o'clock. Mm -hmm. They're running through the city, and that might sound, but I'm no? just keeping it real. real. They're trying to get their stuff, and the marijuana shops are closing up. And that's the type of pastor I am. I listen to the whole story. What do you need and how can I help you get there? But I, and then knowing police are on the corners, knowing that the police are there, is putting them under impending doom. Maybe the police won't stop them, but guess what? Their minds, I don't think, can take much more. We don't want, in a, by the end of this year, to end up with thousands of traumatized, what brother, youth, because they can't see their way out. Their mothers aren't getting a check. The second stimulus didn't come. We're, we've handed out our, <coughs> I give out food two or three times a week. We've given out our whole house of food in our house. Our breakfast nook is empty because we had a order for food and our order has not come yet. People are hungry. People, and a lot of the youth, nobody has taken into account. They didn't have lunch. They, they were not in school. So a lot of these high schoolers that are protesting are hungry. They did not get the morning breakfast. They didn't get the lunch. And I particularly went to my son's school, who's graduating this year, thank God, amen, who's, graduate, who's graduating. And I went there one day with Pastor, and we were sitting there watching the children scarf their lunch down. And I said, they're really eating that lunch. Because when we were younger, we like didn't want to eat that lunch. Hunger is a big issue, and I think the city must address the fact that a lot of the folk, young people in particular, who are in the streets, they need a solid, whatever the solid is, they need a solid, solid meal, 
We don't deny that the parents didn't get that stimulus check. Rent is due, mom is mad, dad is mad, cousins are mad, auntie's mad. We are just in a mad place. And I do, it behooves us to be super sensitive over you right now. They might be, t I saw a, a business boarding up on our way here and it was an Asian business and they stopped and they put a minority owned and then they wrote under to secure their standing, Black Lives Matter. And I turned and I said to them, I hope that's for real, that you really feel that because we need you to really feel that. Not, don't just put it to save your, the, save your window. But I, I do want to say that I feel something. I feel if we get this man right here and I, in, a, in the front of the people. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm just saying. I, there are people that operated when we were in D.C. There are people that operated under Bill Clinton and under uh, that there are people that can bring some sensibility to this thing yes. and to our community yes. that look like us. Pastor Worsham and my brother and Reverend here. First of all, Mayor, I want to thank you for the leadership you've given during this pandemic. We were just, I pray, we were getting ready to curve with COVID 19 in LA. Uh, we're dealing with, I believe, three pandemics at one time mm -hmm. concurrently. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, a nation is in the unrest. We've got a reprobate in the White House. <laughs> and we're dealing with systemic racism. Mm -hmm. We have gathered at these tables time and time again. Mm -hmm. We have had bacon. We have had eggs. We have had pancakes. <laughs> we have prayed. We have <laughs> prophesied. Yes. We have marched. We've done all of those things. You have invited us into your home. You have invited us into your chambers. Thank you for giving the religious leaders, in particular, audience for us to share. Thank you for placing persons on your staff, the Reverend Kirk Patrick Tyler, the Reverend David Price, that keep us in the loop. Amen. Amen. Can you all give them a round of applause? Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother David. Thank you, Brother But they, they keep us in the loop. We have made our demands today. Our city is in the uprest, unrest. I shared with Dr. Fisher this morning, I remember in 1992, Mayor Tom Bradley convened Dr. Thomas Kilgore, Bishop Charles Blake, Dr. Chip mm -hmm. Murray, and other yes. key stakeholders in this community that were faith leaders. Mm -hmm. Those faith leaders called, called, and brought this city to calm. That's right. During civil Teams. unrest. Yeah. Those faith leaders. Yeah brought this city to calm. Teach. Um, and so, I want to ask you today, This is, and I don't want to be selfish when I say this, this may not be the sentiment of others at this table. I'm tired of these round tables. Yes. With no action items yes. before we walk out of this door. We walk out of here with a photo op, mm. and a newspaper clipping. No. I want us to leave if we can yes. with right. an action item. That's right. At, at least one. Yes. Um, and we've made our demands. So I'm asking you, what can we do collectively? Just like Tom Bradley told Kilgore and Murray and Blake and the others what he needed, what can we do for you? And, I'm gonna, and I want to say this. Each and every pastor and leader that, that's at this table, represented from as far as Long Beach, South Central LA, the West LA, the Merck Park, so forth and so on. We're here to help. Not a, not an elitist, uh, select group That's of right. clergy That's persons right. that you. no longer have the pulse of the community. That's right. Mm -hmm. These who you see mm -hmm. in this room today have the pulse mm -hmm. of the community. We're not getting anywhere because we are speaking to those who hide in their fortresses, mm -hmm. but they're not out here. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying to you on behalf of all, we are here to serve. We're here to help. Tell us what you need from us. Yes. And I listen, we all fight. 
That's right. We, we all have our disagreements. <laughs> this is tell the truth. Yes. 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 <laughs> we have our moments. We all have our moments. Some of us in this room have not seen each other in months, weeks, maybe even years. But when it's time yes. to work, for the people, yes. we come together. Yes. Yeah, we, we know the See, these are your foot soldiers. So, Mayor, today, please send us out of this room yes. Yes. with yes. an assignment. Yes. Do. Hey! We yes. have the pulse. You can send right. Most yes. of those persons <laughs> in the streets right now protesting mm -hmm. and looting mm -hmm. sit in our pews on Sunday yes. morning. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. They do. Yeah, they do. Mm -hmm. And that's why Mayor stop. Bradley mm -hmm. said to those <laughs> leaders in 92, please yes. tell them to stand down mm -hmm. and please let's strategize together. Amen. Awesome. That's good. Yeah. Good work. Good. Uh, Bishop Campbell, I, 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 have to, I have to first say thank you and thank you to Pastor Tullis for even opening up the door. And I piggyback off of those two young men there. I was born and raised here. My family has been a part of administration since Mayor Tom Bradley. And we do have the option to touch those in the pews as well as those that are gang related. Yes. But we're sitting here with concerns, but what I, my request is, I'm asking that you turn these concerns into caring matters. And I say that because when you have your briefing, mm -hmm. you're concerned about your staff getting up in the morning, coming to work, and returning home to their family. We're concerned about our families returning home after they get up in the morning. I have seven boys and two girls. My concern is when they walk out the door, whether they're at home or if they're in their own home, that they return at the end of the day. My wife calls them at least three or four times a day just to check their whereabouts. We need for the mayor to touch his staff the officers, black, white, brown, yes. Mexican, whatever color, and tell them that they need to have a concern, like they have a concern to return to their families. Well, we want to have a concern to have the yeah. citizens be able to return to their families. That's, right. Right. That's, That's my request. I appreciate what you're doing, but we need these concerns to become caring matters. If we can just get them to care just a little bit more, we'll see a change. Mm. That's what Thank you, Mayor, for this opportunity here today. Thank you, every Pastor. I'm here representing uh, Churches in Action, San Fernando Valley. Um, I was born and raised in Pacoima, California. I've been here all my life. Uh, we've been through this many of times. I think I've been one of the most critical here uh, against you. I was one of the chief petitioners in your recall, um, and there's reasons for that. Um, I echo everything that was shared here today, but I want to share a personal story that made a difference for me and changed my perspective with LAPD. I don't know what the program was called. Part of it was a Jeopardy program, the PALS program. But we also had an officer that moved into our neighborhood. He moved into our neighborhood and he had a swimming pool. We were 12, 13 years old at the time. And this officer, we didn't know he was a police officer because that time they didn't take their, their, their units home or anything. But he was just so friendly to us. He'd welcome us in. He'd uh, open up his house. He'd, he'd, he'd have barbecue hot dogs for us. Uh, but what linked into him was the youth programs that you have now we need to expand on that, and here's how we need to expand. See, I would never know about the PAL programs if I didn't see this big blue bus that would show up on Arlita and Fillmore and would sit there and it had a big LAPD sign. What they would do is they would go out into our communities. If you wanted to get involved in the boxing program, which is what we did, we fought at that time for Foothill Police Department. They would train us. They'd take us to a park. They'd feed us. They'd train us. They'd help us in our, with our counselors at school. Any help that we needed, we had officers that were like it was part of our family. So then we would compete against other police departments. And when we competed with other police departments, we would meet other community members, other people of color. Because at that time, you know, there wasn't other than the Pacoimos, you had black, white, and, and brown, you know, was pretty much it. Now you have a lot of different colors at the table. So at that time, it was beautiful because you could just, you met so many different people and it changed my perspective of how I saw police officers. But it also allowed the young men and women, many of that we speak for, who don't have a parent to drop them off at a park, who don't have a parent to drop them off at a youth facility. You know, so if we can just expand on that, I think that would make a difference. Uh, thank you for all you do. I uh, would not want to be in your shoes. It's, a, it's, it's tough decisions you have to make. But as you see, we're here. 
We're here to work with you if you give us a chance. One more, JT. JT, we gotta hear from all you, JT. Thank you. Can I give you a seat? Or you want to sit? <laughs> no, no, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. You got plenty of chairs. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Um, I just wanted to speak. Um, I guess from a youth standpoint, um, this is really a heavy job. That, that you got. You kind of like Barack Obama right now. You walked into some stuff that you just got to fix. Um, and achieve more too. What, what, I, what I would really ask is that I know that you're here now not just because you want to be, which I'm sure you do, but of, of necessity too. We're talking about this stuff right now at a round table, but I would really like to see something where we set up something maybe in a month from now or two months from now where we can see what we've done from this point forward, number one. Number two, we got a lot of situations with a lot of uh, people like looting in LA, LA County, and other areas. I don't necessarily condone what's happening, but it does bring a sense of reality to a lot of people. A lot of people have said inside of the urban community, inside the hood, that you know they should be able to get back and forth places, they should be able to be safe, it's their area. I think a lot of people now understand that during this quarantine time how unsafe it is in certain areas because now they feel it. Now they feel it. A lot of things that a lot of people who weren't marching and protesting are protesting now, not only because they don't have anything else to do because they're home all day, yeah. but also because of necessity, because they, they, they kind of feel it. And it, and I hate to say it in that in that in that manner, but it's really the truth. If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. And that's our reality every day that we, we go through. We go through every day. So it's like, I don't necessarily condone uh, uh, rioters and looters, but the reality is now you see, you literally see people, businesses that are like, you know what, now it makes a difference. Now it's hitting us in our pockets. It doesn't matter. You always follow the money, you follow the results. And that's, and that's for us every day. So it's, I see you all the time. You're on the front line. I, I commend you and, and all of these officers, like I said, like, like the other pastor said, they did a really good job. I know the chief, yeah, I personally, I know Chief Moore, see him all the time. But it, it's just, it's, it's good for us to do this, not just because of necessity, but this is our reality, like, like what the other pastor said. Literally, this is a branch, almost like Corona. Like everybody you see here is branched off everywhere, yep. everywhere. Mm -hmm. So literally, when you pull one round table like this, it spreads. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It spreads around, and whatever we agree upon here, whatever two or three agree upon here, it's it spread it spread amongst the, the community, not just of L.A. Amen. but L.A. County, yep. San Bernardino, yep. Riverside, you know, yep. all the way up Amen. to Sacramento. So it's like this is this is what really matters. We cannot look toward Trump. That's that's our reality. That's out. Any man, any man. And thank you for reclaiming the red hat. Yes. <laughs> no, no, no. America was never great again. We're, we're, make, we're making it great now. We're making it great now. So, so I mean, any man that sits up and, and, and wants to shoot stuff into into audiences of, of nonviolence just so he can take a walk, you got planes, you got jets. You got underground railroads. Yep. Yep. You got people with back exits, but yep. you decide no because I'm me, because yep. I'm rich. I want to walk to where I'm going, yes. and that's not the way we move. Yep. You know, so so uh, Los Angeles, everybody watches us the way we do things. Let's the way do, we do it. Yeah. The way we do a, the way we do a police right. pursuits. Everybody watches us, and whatever we do, that's right. they yes. do. Yeah. Yeah. Every every other city follows suit. That's right. And if we make a difference here, it will, it will follow suit. It will jump down from generation yes, to generation. And, and this is the time when we leave. You know why? Because everyone's watching. Everyone. Everyone. It's not just people like, oh, now you don't have to get a reason for people to follow you on social media. We are the reason. This is our reason right now. Let's, Everyone's watching, so we need to galvanize that as we have people. That'll be That's it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to suppress nobody else's voice. Anyone else <laughs> want to share anything? Anyone else? I know Pastor Fisher had one more thing to say. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Like you, young adults, and young adults. Young adults. I'm just uh, just uh, my name is David. I'm program. I'm 16 years old. I'm out of Greater Zion. So I'm the leadership of Pastor Michael David Fisher. Thank you for being here. Uh, really, I'm only 16, yeah. and I'm scared. Yeah. Uh, I walk out the house uh, recently strong. Friday. I was riding my bike in my neighborhood, and the yeah. police stopped me and said I was. A part of the GTA because I wear a gray sweats. Oh, wow. And I was sitting there under with three, uh, one officer, and he had called his lieutenant, and he had called whoever and the other people that came. But it was it was more of a fact that I was like, wow, is this was really coming to. Me? Like I never really thought that. Mm -hmm. I'm at a 16 year old, I only want to play football. <coughs> I have to go through this, and my mom is really scared of the fact that I do go out and I do go to practice. 
but she want to know, will I ever get that call or just run up and shout and create yes. a book about it? Wow. And it scares me. So all I really want to know is how can me as a young person that, that do like to mess with young other people and like like really like to change things, is there any way I can do something as a young person to help other young kids? Because really, everybody's bored because of the quarantine. Mm -hmm. But I mean, we can't really do nothing. But I mean, if I could do something to like uplift kids and something, mm -hmm. if, if it comes to you, if they have to go through you, I would, because I always plan on starting programs to like help kids. I always mm -hmm. wanted to help kids or help people. But I always never have got that, that good yep. energy. Yep. So I just want protection in LA. Yeah. 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 In Compton, um, we saw a lot of change when the mayor and the council members repositioned the clergy and the church from being in the backseat of the car yeah, to yeah. being a passenger. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And what I, what I, what I want to ask <coughs> is that before things are put out there, before things oh. are written in stone, mm -hmm. if you truly respect that we are gatekeepers to the community, yep. we need to be at the table while you're forming these ideas. Mm -hmm. um, because we all have a pulse to what the community is saying, and what happens is, I feel, this is me, I feel like we're always called in to clean up. Yeah. Right. And I feel like we should be called before you yep. even think yep. to do anything. We find out stuff right along with everybody else, mm -hmm. and that's not fair. And so if there's really going to be a partnership, and that's what it should be, a partnership, then before we even move forward, it would be really great, like the relationship I have with our mayor and yeah, yeah. we sit and we talk all yeah. in about what she's going to do yep. before yes. it's done. Yep. So everyone should be called in to talk about what's going to happen before you actually go. Can I just add one more piece? Last one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I just want to know, I, I got to go too, I understand. Um, uh, again, thank you again. Again, but do you, I live in West LA. I pastor in South LA. But when I get out of my car at home, my neighbors meet and greet me who are not my complexion. Mm -hmm. They're scared. Mm -hmm. yeah. All that on, on you get on your telephone, they're running out buying guns. They think it's going to be a race war. So we need to watch the flip of the coin. What are we going to do to say we're coming together? Yeah. We need some unity talk. So that's all I have to say. I think that's all. The folk who are out there today was a multi religious, a multi racial, and multi generational gap. That's right. And so we had some of our Jewish allies here, shareholders here, you know, uh, you know, several other shows. So that's, that's essential because if, if you don't realize that you can some, you know, uh, it's, it's easy to divide and conquer. But, but, but whenever we move forward, yes, the fact that black lives need to matter and are never going to be at the center. You know, uh, uh, unity, multi religious, multi racial, and uh, multi generational is essential to that of solidarity. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> There's no sense that you come into us and say something to us and you go in to the West Side and say something. Yeah. We have allies on the West Side and we work together yeah. around yeah. it. And I think it's important that we. You know, I, I'm, I'm a proud Christian, I'm a proud pastor, mm -hmm. but I also understand the importance of, of, of multi-religious and yes. multi-racial coalition building. Yes, yes. And, and yep. All right, uh, uh, Mayor. A couple things. I always assume in my life that anything I say is being recorded, so I just speak <laughs> the way I speak if it were. People are recording. No, and I appreciate people are. <laughs> I just no. want to say, if, if you if you <coughs> are, and I don't mind, there's probably some things not like super secret things, just kind of on the emotional side to kind of okay. testify a little bit um, mm -hmm. if, if they are down. But I don't want you to put them down if you want to keep recording. But and you can put them back on in a second. But let me just let me just speak to you personally for a second, if I can ask. Um, 